Hey, what is up guys? I'm KBHD here. Welcome to Techtober. So Microsoft had their event today in New York City unveiling the new lineup of products for the holiday season 2019. And of course it's the Surface family and it looks like a pretty good lineup. Fun fact though, by the time you're seeing this, I got a sneak peek of all of the stuff that was announced today over a week ago back at Microsoft headquarters in Washington. So I get to walk you guys through all of that right now. Plus, I got to sit down and take a look at some of their future upcoming products that aren't coming out this year. And I got to sit down and talk tech with Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella for a little bit. So those are both upcoming videos for later. They might already be out by the time you watch this, but if not, definitely get subscribed to be among the first to see that when they come out. But until then, this is your first look at the refreshed Surface lineup for 2019. So generally we have three main new things and then some accessories to tie it all together. But number one is the Surface Pro 7. So their Windows 10 tablet with a kickstand and a detachable keyboard that can kind of be a laptop sometimes if you want it to be. This one's pretty simple. It's mainly a spec sheet refresh from the previous generation. So you're looking at 10th generation Ice Lake Intel chips inside. They're quoting 10 hour battery life, which is actually less than the Surface Pro 6, but there's fast charging now. So you can get up to 80% in just over half an hour of charging, which will definitely be appreciated. I like that fast charging is a, a pretty common feature now in devices in 2019. And uh, Surface Pro still got a 12 inch three x two display, a little above 1440p and same magnesium body. But now you can see there's also a USB type C port instead of mini display port. So, okay, one USB type C and one full size USB A, nice. Same two colors, platinum or matte black, and then you can get the keyboard type covers in different colors like this uh, poppy red. The whole Surface two to one form factor was pretty revolutionary when it was first introduced from Microsoft, but now it's sort of rounding into form and these are more spec updates and refinement. And so this isn't some huge update. The instant on and keyboard improvements will be much appreciated by people who use it every day. And also I'm happy to USB C that port. <laughs> Uh, anyway, these are pretty light refreshes. It'll start at 749. Then next up, there is the Surface Laptop 3. Um, I really like the Surface Laptop 2 from last year. I was kind of looking like that, waiting for USB Type-C to show up in a laptop that could have basically been perfect, but that was one of my favorites from 2018. So this is an update to that. Along comes Surface Update 3, and yes, right off the bat, it has USB Type-C. It is just one single USB-C port alongside one USB-A port, which I think I would have wanted two or three on a laptop, but okay. Uh, and the rumors were true. There's also now two sizes, a 13 inch and a 15 inch Surface laptop. Now I just gotta say, Microsoft has really gotten the clean lines aesthetic down with their mobile stuff. I think the layman might look at it and say, oh, it looks a lot like a MacBook. Um, but it's even cleaner looking than a MacBook when you look at it more closely. You know, there's no finger scoop for opening the lid. It's just a slight overhang and the perfect hinge weight. So you don't need to have that cut out carved. And there's also no speaker grill. So the speaker is actually literally behind the backlit keyboard firing up through it to avoid having those cutouts. So I got to test this more to see how it sounds and you know how I feel about a lot of this stuff. But generally I am a fan of this ultra minimal aesthetic. It has a 20% larger trackpad here also, which is definitely welcome. And you can choose between different colors and finishes now, kinda. So there's Alcantara or aluminum. The 15 inch version only comes in aluminum. So you just choose between platinum or matte black. Uh, and the 13 inch version, you can get those metal colors or an additional sandstone metal color or any of the fabric Alcantara colors for a softer keyboard palm rest. I'm personally surprised, a sucker for the matte black, but Hey, that's just me. And then the specs also have an interesting twist too. So the 13 inch version will have the updated Intel chips an i5 or an i7 is configurable with Iris graphics, but then the 15 inch version will have AMD chips. So there will be a Ryzen 5 base model with Vega 9 graphics or a Ryzen 7 edition with Vega 11 graphics. So that's super interesting to see those two side by side right next to each other. And then the laptop will also have fast charging zero to 80% in one hour, which is kind of nice. And the 15 inch laptop will have the same size trackpad as the 13 and the same pixel density of the touchscreen itself. So here are the resolutions. Uh, they're three by two aspect ratios, so they're not normal numbers, but there you have it. I am definitely excited for this laptop. I think the 13 inch probably Surface Laptop 3 in matte black will probably 
be my next because I'm not tied to Mac OS X anymore on my laptop now that I don't edit in Final Cut on the go anymore. So we'll see how that goes. Definitely stay tuned for the review for when I get my hands on these. The 13 inch is gonna start at 999 and the 15 inch with the AMD chips will start at 1199. And then last but certainly not least was the bigger surprise of the event which was the Microsoft Surface Pro X. You know, anytime they break out that X name, things are getting serious. So this thing is going back to the tablet form factor, but it's now thinner, has thinner bezels, and it's now ARM-based and has bespoke accessories made specifically for it, updated. It's pretty cool. First of all, it's crazy thin, as you can see. It's 7.3 millimeters thin, which is thinner than a lot of phones right now. It has two USB Type-C ports, so now we're talking. And it's a 13 inch display with thin bezels, so it still kind of fits in the same 12 inch display footprint from the Surface Pro 7. Still three by two, still has a weird aspect ratio, but that's the same footprint. And then on the inside, it is in fact custom silicon developed with Qualcomm that they're calling the Microsoft SQ1 chip. And it has an Adreno 685 GPU, and there's a dedicated block for certain neural processing to take place to take load off of the main processor. Um, so there's some big claims with performance that I definitely want to test, but it's pretty impressive stuff. It should get up to 13 hours of battery life, and it has fast charging as well. And it also has LTE, so you can put a nano SIM card in it. Microsoft is calling this sort of their next generation two-in-one, which of course leads me to believe they're focused a lot more on it than the Surface Pro refresh. Uh, and there's a ton of little things here that are also better about the Pro X experience. The kickstand, is pretty thin. Uh, it kind of feels like you maybe could snap it off if you tried hard enough, um, not to spoil a Jerry Rig Everything video, but it does go to a pretty big variety of angles. And they've also made a new Alcantara keyboard and pen for it called the Surface Pro X Signature Keyboard. And it has a slot up at the top for the new Surface Slim Pen to magnetically rest and wireless charge. So the new Slim Pen seems interesting. Pretty much every stylus I've ever used for any sort of tablet is always round like a normal pen. This one is more flattened. And for me, it was fine for just random doodling, which isn't super serious, but I'm not sure how it would feel trying to write a lot or take a lot of notes. That may be yet to be seen. But latency is super short, and there's an eraser tip on the back, so that's also sensitive and pretty cool, and seemed to work really well. And then there is no headphone jack and no expandable storage, but there is up to a half a terabyte of built-in SSD, so that should be fine. And it only comes in one color, matte black, which is, you know, not a huge downside. So this will come in at a thousand bucks to start, and for me, that feels very competitive with the higher-end iPad Pro. Because, you know, each of them have their own advantages. The iPad has the App Store and the 120 hertz ProMotion display, but you also have full-fledged Windows and two USB Type-C ports and a much better keyboard accessory with the Surface Pro X. So to each their own, I think that could be an interesting comparison. But again, very sleek hardware here from Microsoft. And then to top it all off, they also dropped Surface earbuds, which are kind of like a follow-up to the Surface headphones, but they're now completely wireless earbuds and they have this case they come in, which charges via USB Type-C, which is awesome. It has an eight hour battery life to the buds themselves or 24 hours to the whole system. And they have this huge flat surface area on each bud for gestures, which is potentially a good thing, depending on how they fit in your ears or not. And that's it. There you have it. That's your first look and brief impressions of Microsoft's new lineup for the holiday season 2019. I think I'm most impressed by the Surface Pro X but I'm personally most looking forward to the Surface Laptop 3. I think that's gonna be my laptop from here on out. But let me know what you guys think. Of course, we gotta get them all from HQ into the studio here to test them out and actually see if they're legit. And maybe if there's that 16 inch MacBook Pro coming out from Apple later this year, then that Surface Laptop MacBook Pro comparison could be interesting too. Either way, that's coming up all soon in the next couple of weeks probably because Techtober is insane. But that's been it for this first video. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.